Roll call, please. Mr. Mazzarini? Here. Mr. Zinsky? Here. Mrs. Zalesna? Here. Mr. Zinsky? Here. Mrs. Zalesna? Here. Mr. Zinsky? Here. Mr. Cora? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Kearney? Here. Mr. Kopak? Here. Mr. Murphy? Here. Mr. Mariano? Present. Thank you. Mr. Seltzer, any recognitions tonight? No, but we would like to make one adjustment to the uh, agenda for tonight. We'd like to remove uh, action discussion. I'm oh, sorry, remove under the superintendent report, uh, under the consent agenda 6.12, approve varsity new, news network agreement. We'd like to remove that from the agenda. Thank you. At this time, if anybody's in the audience and would like to step up and make a comment, please step forward, give us your name and address. Hi, everybody. Um, do I still get my name and address? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure the stuff's all the same. I'm Paletti. I live at 96 Cypress Drive. And I'm here today to talk about the Education Foundation. Um, I recently became a member of that board when another board member um, had to step away. So um, for the folks that aren't familiar with the foundation, I thought that perhaps I would give you just a couple quick little facts. Um, not much. Um, so the mission is to recognize and reward exceptional academic student achievement <coughs> for personal growth and to promote high quality innovative instruction. So in the past few years, the foundation has given over $20,000 to teachers in the form of gift grants that they applied for that have an emphasis on stimulating innovative teaching ideas and new learning opportunities for the students. Um, also, $14,000 has been given to the students who apply for scholarships, and there are five different categories they can apply for scholarship in. Um, one is exceptional academic achievement, significant academic or personal growth, attending a technical or two-year school, the Dr. Sarah Tambucci Scholarship, and the CVCFS, Central Blood Bank Scholarship. Additionally, you may not know this, um, $33,000 is going to go back to the district for the um, superintendent for programs that he selects. So um, our annual fundraiser is a trivia night, and it takes place Saturday, March 24th at 6.15 p.m. Um, at the Heidelberg Fire Hall. Um, for those of you who have been and maybe haven't been back for a while, um, you should know that the new format is fun, fast, and um, it's streamlined, and there's great questions, great challenges, you know, to use up all those useful facts we have in our heads. And um, so, and while it is a fundraiser, of course, it is an opportunity for all of us to come together as a community to support our teachers and our students. So I personally have room at my table, and I invite any and all to join me on March the 24th. And um, I left some flyers up there for you guys, just if you need the site to sign up or whatever. There's also um, something there for sponsorship. If you know a business that would like to be a sponsor for the evening, you can do that as well. So um, thank you so much for listening, and I hope to see you all on the plane. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, hope ahead, yeah. I hope I'm not stepping in front of anybody. Yeah, go ahead. yeah my name is Bob Fryer. I appeared here once before about uh, attempting to solicit the support of the school district. Uh, uh, directed at PennDOT to uh, point out the importance of the traffic congestion problem on Washington Pike. It's existed for 40 or 50 years. Uh, I have some. Uh, data here I'll give you later that will explain uh, a, a little bit more about elevating your level of knowledge about this stuff. But uh, I did, had an opportunity about a month ago of having to make a request through the Pennsylvania Department of Open Records to get some information from PennDOT about an issue. I, I didn't shake you probably know about it, but at any rate, uh, some, some confidential information that I gave the PennDOT engineer releases the public, or I should have released to some original officials who recorded it, publicized it, and ended up at a public meeting and was televised for the next month with my advantage. But at any rate, uh, I, I'd like to just mention the fundamentals as I recognize this. Uh, the, 
school costs like the municipal costs are going to estimate rapidly over the next few years. You're in the middle of a nine, uh, $91 million construction plan. The tax revenues from your business districts are more important to the school district and the community than the tax revenues from the residents of the community, obviously, from the residential loans. Excuse me. The, uh, uh, the uh, importance of that to you would be uh, important to impart to PennDOT. I'll give you a, a brief letter in a couple of days to just to indicate simply that you're in, because of your concern for the tax revenue production in your business districts and because it's been paralyzed for the past uh, 35 to 40 years, uh, it affects you uh, directly, not indirectly. And I might mention uh, we had two uh, public opinion polls done, one just two years ago, the other about 15 years ago. Because of the traffic congestion, 50% of the people living in a five mile radius around the Collier, Bridgeville, Safayette, Scott Business District have been detouring around the area. Ever, ever since uh, I 79 was built in around 65, and 50,000 consumer motors today go from Route 19 going through Mount Lebanon up to St. Clair to going through uh, South Bay and Bridgeville. It was a, a very important economic uh, change, and uh, it, we haven't taken advantage of it. And I, it would be great as the recognized intellectuals in the region with the school board would uh, offer your support to try to get some of the things some of us are doing. To get that problem solved. All right? Thank I'll, you. I'll Thank just you give much. this to Jeff and Lee. Thanks, John. Thank you. Hi, Nicole Steinhardt. Good evening. Good evening. I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. It's so my first time doing this. So, um, okay, so I was um, here to talk about school safety. Nicole, did you give us your address? I'm sorry, 1644 Silview Drive, Thank you. Pittsburgh, PA 15243. Thank you. Um, so I'm here to talk about school safety. I do have some questions about it. I know there was a meeting last evening in regards to school safety, so I don't know if this is the time that I ask my questions, or is that at the end? Well, these, right now? Yeah, okay. And here's, here's so you know the yeah. format. You can ask a question, but it's actually supposed, this is a comment area by okay. the public, so we may not answer them. Okay. But you're really supposed to be making a comment. Okay. okay so the board's not required to answer okay. them, but we will certainly listen to your questions. Okay. 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 Sounds good. So um, some of the questions that we kind of, um, some of us came up with, and as well as myself, from yesterday's meeting was, um, how many children are currently enrolled in the school district K through 12? Um, how many resource officers per student? So how many are utilized? So is it, you know, one one resource resource officer per 300 students? So what is that ratio? Um, who is manning the cameras that are currently installed, if there are any? Um, I know that they are apparently linked to the Collier Township Police Department, but is there a police officer who is watching them at all times? Um, is there somebody in the schools that's watching them? So that is a question that um, myself and a lot of parents um, do have. Um, has the school district considered metal detectors? Um, I am aware, according to the meeting yesterday evening, that the school district is already over budget um, from a safety perspective. That's what we were informed of. Um, we didn't so, say over budget. We oh, just we just said what the budget was. What the budget was. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I must yeah. I must have. Heard that incorrectly. So um, then my next question was, how are we affording more resource officers if we're over budget? So yeah, right. strike that question. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, how many times a year is each grade reviewing safety drills? So is that a fire drill as well as any type of lockdown drill? Um, I am aware of the Scott Township Police Department working with other schools. So for example, um, St. Simon and Jude Preschool, where they come in and they've done a lockdown training with them. They have um, taped off the room where they cannot still, a police officer stands in the door and looks in the room and they tape off the room where they cannot see the teachers or the students. And that tape, that tape stays on the floor. Is that something that this school district has implemented? Are they considering doing that? Having um, maybe Collier come through, look at the door, look in each door, 
take off where students and teachers could go, where if there was a situation of an active shooter, they would not be able to be seen. Um, I was also told that the wrong locks were installed on the doors. I don't know if it's in the middle school or whatever the case is, and they were told to um, tie it down with a buckle or a shoelace. I mean, me personally, I don't really feel that that's very secure, but... Um, I don't think the well, that conversation was wrong locks. It was just part of the Alice, uh, Alice training. Okay. Is that is part of it? Okay. Is you, part of the Alice training is, yes, you lock the door, but you also barricade it. Okay. Because... Sometimes people can get in just a locked door, but if you barricade a door, that prevents, takes time, so that person would most likely would give up, move to another room. Yeah. So it's it's not that we don't lock the doors, the locks okay. don't work, it's just we want to do more than just lock the doors. Okay. And when you go through the training, they tell you, look at all the available <coughs> options, mm -hmm. such as uh, a network cord or a string or whatever, use that to lock from the inside, and that's okay. where you might because there are actually YouTube videos that show that yeah. where you lock from the inside. Okay. And then for um, fire drills, it's required by law that uh, all the schools do a fire drill per month. Okay. okay. All buildings. Okay. Yep. So I did know the, um, the fire drill, and I just know from like a lockdown drill perspective, um, I have a child in the middle school as well as the high school, and then I'll have a child going to the um, primary school next year. My middle school student and my high school student had not had any type of lockdown drill this year. Um, so I've asked them, like, what would they do if somebody came into the school with a gun? And their answers were, I don't know. Look at my teacher. So, you know, I just feel as though I get that the teachers might be doing this training, but I think that the children need to participate too so that they know what to do in that situation so that everything, you know, we're not putting anybody in danger. Um, I just have a concern. What, the reason why I brought this up is Myself, personally, I actually walked into this middle school without the doors being locked in the middle of the day. I walked right through that first set of doors and then the second set of doors. No teacher, no administration, nobody in the administration, nothing. I was here for a meeting with my son's teachers. I walked back out through the doors and went into the school office. Nobody stopped me. So when was that, that kind of... May I ask when that was? Probably November. Mm-hmm. So that just kind of raised the flag for me that, you know, there might be some lack of security issues here. And then I did hear other parents who were bringing that up as well, that they just walked right into the school with nobody asking them why they were here. Um, so those are some of the questions that I do have. Um, I just want to make sure, you know, that it's on the record that I'm here stating that I do have concerns about the safety um, in the school districts. Um, I don't know if anybody's willing to answer any of the additional questions that I asked, um, but... We're going to talk about that okay. uh, later in the, in the meeting. So okay. We'll, I hope we, we will be able to address most of it, okay. if not all of it. Okay. Thanks for coming. Right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> two issues tonight briefly. First of all is accountability uh, on the teacher's part. I don't know if this is something that I would discuss with like, a union rep when it comes to, like, I don't know when um, negotiations for new contracts are, but I, it just drives me crazy that some teachers do not put their grades in until the end of the nine weeks. I don't know how you can you're creating the papers, just stick them in the computer system. This is not fair to kids who like, you know, my son who is not the best, he's a good student, he just doesn't do any homework. So that comes into play. And also, if there, I was hoping there could be like a timeline, if, you know, they have a test on a Monday, could, like three days given for they could have their grades back. But sometimes it's like two weeks. And that's not fair to a student who's studying and doing extracurricular and sports, you know, they're managing their time, yet, to study, so could the teacher manage their time to get grades back in a timely manner? And get to the point. Okay, secondly, my son, who I come and talk about a lot, uh, his typical day, he's here from 7.30 to 12.30, he comes home for 20 minutes for a quick lunch, he goes to Pittsburgh Musical Theater 1.30 to 5, and tonight he's at rehearsal for Leave Me Blonde 5.30 to 10. Sometimes he stays at PMT 5.30 to 10.30 for rehearsals if he's doing a show for 
and then, you know, two minutes for home. Uh, so he's, he's busy, and he loves musical theater. So when he came home for lunch today, this dejected manner, what's wrong? He said, guess who was at our rehearsal for Legally Blonde last night? I don't know who. I'm not going to say his name, but the kid that tweeted about him last year, about beating him up, who, Maddie had to change class, had to get out of acting class last year, they had to change his schedule because this student just bullied him. Uh, he was there, no, my son doesn't know if he's being, uh, if he's playing an instrument for the show or if he was just there last night playing his instrument. But if that kid is back from college and in my son's senior year of musical theater show, that's wrong. That is wrong for my son to be upset. It's like this one show he gets without this kid torturing him. And there he is, back in the show. So if he is in it, which I, again, my son didn't know. He was just there uh, for, the, for the evening. Who would have okayed that? You know, I mean, does Giffen just have that much control? Yep, I want this person, this person to be in the pit. And no, no one, she doesn't have to answer to anyone because that's not right. It's his senior year. But he like have one break should not have this kid reading down his brain. So that's, I would just like to know, you know, if it was Mr. Myers who okayed it and he doesn't know anything that's going on with all this situation last year with my son, I, I don't know, or, or again, did she not have to ask anyone? But I just, you know, it kind of comes back to the accountability. It just seems like some coaches, you know, like they just get to make these decisions on their own and there has to be someone that they're accountable to. It's kind of feel like there might be a communication breakdown between when parents come and discuss with you, and then they get to the correct person. In this case, whoever she had to that permission to, if she had to, I don't know. But I just think it really stinks that if he is playing his instrument for the four nights of the musical, and he's here every night this week and next week, like my son's the one that kind of gets screwed over. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Anyone else? Yeah, mine's just a comment. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm Rita Mansky. I live on 710 Hope Street. Why can't we have a microphone in here? We can't hear anything that they're saying. Um, I'm loud, so you all hear me, I'm sure. So, and I just want to say that um, kudos to the workers outside that worked in all this weather. And it's a job well done out there. And that's just a thank you to everyone. But we need somebody to be able to hear. Scott always hears me. Right, Scott? <laughs> yes, you do. So that's all I want to say, and thank you to, for everything. So, that's it. Great comment. And, you know, this is, this is noodles. Oh, so, noisy. So obviously, as I'm sitting here thinking, I have to talk to Scott about how we're going to use this room because this is what this room is built for. Communication, public public use of really? the space, absolutely. So you have a stage, right? Yeah. So oh, the, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of this type of stuff done in this room. So we got to we got to sit down and say how's going to how are we gonna, how are we going to do that best? See, we kept you employed, Scott. There you go. Works <laughs> <laughs> for me. So good comments. <coughs> Anyone else? Mr. President, before we move on, yes. if we could just recognize we have. Uh, Two former board members with us, uh, Mrs. Fogorski and Mrs. Coletti, just like to recognize them. They put a number of years uh, serving this district as board members and served this district very well. So just wanted to recognize you ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jeff. <coughs> Mr. Seltzer, Superintendent's Report. Uh, I want you know, a couple topics that we were talking about uh, previously. One would be the uh, rent, renting of facilities and, and the cost of renting the facilities. I believe that we probably need to discuss that further, and that probably should take place July 1. I don't know if my recommendation would take, if we change anything, we do it July 1, because I don't know if it would be fair to the people who have already rented or assigned things. So that would be a recommendation for that. And then I, I think when we talk about the elementary uh, Spanish program, really talk to consider that, um, you know, as we look at it, and I think Jillian can, you know, weigh in a little bit on this too, if we do elementary Spanish properly, uh, 
Um, I think we have to devote more time to it than what we've had in the past. In order to do that, I think then we have to discuss if that's something we're going to do, where we're going to get that time from. Um, so I, I think there's a, a bigger discussion that we're going to have to have uh, globally, K-12, about our Spanish program. Um, and I just wanted to let you, that's where we are as, as administrative staff when it comes to our elementary uh, Spanish program. So, uh, Jillian, if you have anything to add to that. Well, I just think that effective practices show that immersion is the best way to learn a language. And I think immersion would be very difficult to do given our current um, state in terms of the number of faculty we have and the time of the day that we have. So it just, it lends itself to more challenges than meet the eye. And it's just something that we have to we kind of have to work through and decide what's most important. Thank you, Joe. Anything else? No. Solicitor's report. Uh, no report. And thank you, Mr. <coughs> okay, at this time I'd like to approve our minutes from and yeah, have the dates on from our last meeting, I should say. Yep. Yep. 123. 123. So I'd like to get a motion. They weren't attached. They weren't attached. They weren't attached. So we left to table that to the next meeting. Yeah, that table. Table that to the next meeting. We'll move on to our informational agenda. Do we have a report from the Education Foundation representative? We had a really good report from you. Yes, we sure did. <laughs> That's right. And actually, I'd, I'd like to maybe fill in that spot tonight if I could. Um, Mr. Kaczynski and I had the opportunity to spend some time with Mrs. Fiborski, who's the president of the Education Foundation. And uh, in, in, in the recent history, we, we have not had a real good, uh, re not relationship, but uh, communication between the board and the foundation just for a variety of reasons. Um, lack of representation of time allotments for people to be on, on the Education Foundation. You know, some, some other very things that caused us not to have the best communication, but I think moving forward and having our discussions as we have, um, this is a great opportunity to reset and, and realign and, 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 and use the abilities of the entire district and the entire community to create a really meaningful relationship between the foundation and the district. And uh, so we're excited about the trivia night. We're excited to lend ourselves in any way to help the foundation become you know, truly a great foundation in helping educate kids and helping assist teachers. And in reality, <coughs> and our vision of it may be slightly beyond what your vision states now, but we hope maybe with our, with our input, we can even take your vision further. Okay? Thank you very All right. much. Thank you. Great. Mr. Kramer, Pathfinder. Um, yeah, we had our meeting last Wednesday. Um, unfortunately, I was on a conference call with, with the rest of you on the superintendent search, so I, I didn't attend that meeting, and I haven't yet received um, an email uh, with all the information from my board secretary, but uh, I know we are, uh, what I expect to see in that email is the uh, second draft of the budget, so we'll be working through the budget so that we can present that soon. Um, the main uh, issue in that budget, as everyone's well aware of, is the roof. Um, there was a meeting, a special meeting that was held uh, regarding the roof. We had some constant conversation on, and um, we're still uh, waiting on some contractors to go up and, uh, you know, we had one estimate, we had one contractor go up and, and give us, uh, you know, preliminary scope and a preliminary bid, but we're going to try and tighten that up and determine whether we can uh, patch and repair for one more year and, um, you know, how we're going to go ahead and raise the money or, uh, or pay for the roof replacement as needed. And I'll, um, when I get the notes from my board secretary, I'll read through them and, you know, to distribute them out to Thank you. Mr. Cord, Parkway. I have to apologize, folks. I was unable to attend that meeting. I was at a very special meeting with my board. We were interviewed. So <laughs> I will have a report next month for all of you. Thank you. Shaz, I have for Sandy. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. I, I told Sandy to help her that. We talked about some of that. 
I'm going to you know, right with the Shaz, so we'll park with some of that. So their next meeting is Thursday, March 1st, and it's uh, that uh, first annual student forum. The format's changed, the theme. It's showcasing South Hills area schools. Each member school district has been invited to select a student from uh, various grade levels and share something that is happening in their school that makes them proud. And uh, a, a few CV students will be participating. And I don't know, Scott, you have anything? I think to add? we have four students. Patrick, we have four students participating. Is that correct? Yeah. So and, uh, it's a new format. Uh, the past few years, what they did is they'd ask, they give the students a group of questions, and then they would answer the questions about how education is and, and that. And it was really a good opportunity for uh, board members and, and superintendents and administrators to hear about what the kids thought about their, the educational process. Now it's sort of changed a little bit where they're gonna show off the kids a little bit. So the, the kids have a project or, or, or a uh, idea that they're going to present to all this. It's gonna be sort of like a, you know, go to different booths, go to different area, and the kids are going to do their, um, their project or the thing that they're learning about. So, so it gives the South Hills Area School Districts an opportunity to see what other schools are doing uh, so you get a sort of a snapshot and then we can, you know, help each other out when it comes to different programs. So, uh, we're hoping that that it spurs more uh, participation from our schools. So we're really looking for our, you know, our, our attendance has been, been good, especially with our board members, but other school districts haven't been. So we're just trying to increase the number of schools that are attending to sort of grow that community. Sandy Meal both. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, before our public meeting, we did have a finance committee meeting tonight, and Mr. Kaczynski has a report from the finance committee. Uh, we discussed a lot of subjects, very uh, a few of them we discussed in a lot of detail. Uh, the first thing we discussed was uh, our insurance broker. Uh, had a couple issues uh, within the last month or so, uh, really questioning whether we're getting the level of service that we really deserve through our insurance broker. So it has been recommended us that we go out to RFP um, in the not-too-distant future for a new uh, insurance broker. Campus security, uh, near and dear to all of our hearts, uh, we all have kids, most of us have kids in each of these buildings, so we did talk about it at length. We had asked for a list of things that we could purchase or things that could be done. Um, a lot of that, things that we have heard through the public, feed on the ground, surveillance, video, things like that. So obviously, these are tough times, uh, we really want to do everything that we can and be creative, just like everybody else. So one thing that we discussed was putting out for referendum at a vote uh, to see if it would be warranted, people would be up for a millage increase specifically to um, go towards security, additional feet on the ground, surveillance, things like that. If you look at the list, a lot of it, while some of it are equipment, machines, things like that, a lot of it is personnel costs, which are recurring costs year after year something that a millage increase would definitely be able to cover. Uh, we talked about timing and things like that. Uh, then we moved on, talked about AEDs, uh, needing to purchase additional units. Ours are definitely past their lifespan, and also looking at repositioning them within the buildings. We reviewed the bill listing. Uh, we have a new format, and the board was very complimentary to, our, um, finance, to the finance folks as to putting that together. Uh, we are also looking at purchasing seven buses and three vans this year. Uh, still going to be diesel, uh, other alternatives, natural gas, things like that, still very early. Uh, not sure they're exactly reliable for school buses right now. And we also discussed the size of our bus garage and uh, anything possibly doing something with it in the future. And that's it. Thank you. It was a long meeting, so we apologize for our tardiness coming in here tonight, but there was a lot to talk about. Um, with that being said, as part of the Finance Committee report, I would like to get a motion to accept the 2016-2017 audit report as presented by Cypher and Cypher at the February 13, 2018 meeting. The audit report was, was uh, available um, both that night and through all of our reports, so I hope everybody's had an opportunity to review it. And it was very thorough and 108 pages, if I'm correct. And, uh, we got stellar, uh, stellar comments by our auditor about our business department, how pristine the, uh, the work was, and they did an excellent job of presenting it. So 
I do have one comment before we, we vote on that. I was looking at the management letter comments. Um, last year at this time, we had talked about the concessions uh, and having cash uh, deposited, reconciled, things like that. Uh, we talked about how that would be rectified, and it looks like it showed up again for a second year. So I would hope that that would be looked at again. Uh, we certainly don't want to have that looked uh, show up again. While it's certainly <coughs> not material uh, to our operations, it's not something that we want to have carrying forward from year to year. Good comment. So we, we need to take a look at, at why that was on the report and figure out. Okay. So could I get a motion to approve that? <laughs> so moved. Mr. Second. Kaczynski, second by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. We will move on to the consent agenda. These are items 6.1, which we are, uh, I think, I believe now we're going to table 6.1, um, the human resources report. Uh, just part of the, actually, the human resources report. We're going to table the portion related to the musicians of the band, and we're going to investigate uh, some, some uh, comments made in that area. Yes. Being that the musical is next week, we'll retroactive anybody who is who is approved. Okay. So we're going to just table that one. Um, everybody else that's on the human resources report will not be uh, affected by that. So please uh, re review any questions or comments regarding 6.1 through 6.11. Right. And 1-3 is actually included in there as well. 6-1-2 is, is the lead. Yeah. You said it's just that section we're taking? Yeah, we're just, just going to make sure the, the yeah. musician's yeah. section of the, of the, of the uh, musical. Right. Everything else is going to still be in there. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the, uh, the bowling, the boys and girls bowling teams, postseason tournament teams. How are we so, so we do have club bowling, and every year we pay for tournaments that they belong to. And uh, so our boys and girls uh, made the postseason, so we're just paying the fees for that. It's a club, it's not an actual uh, varsity sport. It is a club sport, and we do that for some of our club sports. Um, and it's 220 each team. I believe it's 350. It allows us up to 350 per team. So uh, we recommend that we support our local bowling club team. <coughs> any questions or comments regarding any rest of the consent agenda? All of these items we've uh, thoroughly discussed at some point in time and, and everybody's read through them so I'm comfortable with taking 6.1 through 6.13 um, and holding in, in reservation the portion of the uh, human resources report that is related to the musicians and the music. 6.12. And 6.12 is the leader. Yeah. It's the leader. Can I get a motion? Second. Mr. Kearney? Second. Second by Mr. Kaczynski. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. We're on to our action discussion items. We're going to talk about the approval of phase one development change order number two. This would be a motion to approve phase one development change order number two as listed for an ad of $2,500 and zero cents. Did everybody have an opportunity to read that, read about that? You want to expand on that, anybody? It's the, it's the asbestos. Yes, the asbestos. Material that was found in the fluid. Yeah, but it was not, obviously not known until they started removing it. Right. And that's basically what it's doing. That's why it's in there. I'm not saying anything to me. Um, 
there's, that's pretty black and white. There's no there's no yeah. real issue there. So if somebody would give me a motion to approve. Second. 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 Murphy moved that. Second by Mr. Kramer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Okay, just a couple things um, before we move on to public comments I'd like to make uh, for the public record. Um, the district uh, held a, a, a security meeting last night at the auditorium. Mr. Seltzer did a stellar job of pulling together a group of professionals to, to discuss uh, where we are as, as a district and how we view security and safety of our kids um, I thought it was a very well done uh, program. Uh, it was great to see 85 concerned people in the room, and it's great to see you all here tonight because we don't nearly see enough of our community members at our meetings. But last night it seemed to be uh, enough of, a, of, a, of a, an important issue that we've got a lot of folks in the room. And the comments were great. A lot of them were, were, were you know, very, very much aligned with how we're thinking. Um, as Mr. Kaczynski referred to in our finance committee meeting, we put a number to it. We put a number to it. And, and it's, all, it's all about money. At, at some point in time, everybody wants to be as safe as we can possibly be. And, and how we can be creative when we do that and, and, and be smart about it, it, it comes down to sometimes dollars and cents and using the resources we have. So, you know, when we talk about going to referendum, we're talking the, the number we came up with, with all the suggestions that were handed out last night, almost two and a half million dollars to put them into place. So, you know, it, it, it's an important, important matter to keep our buildings, keep our kids safe, keep our staff safe, but it also takes money. So when, when you're out there in the community and you're thinking safety and security, promote the fact that we need the money to do it. And, and I'm asking you to do that. So, so keep that in mind, um, you know, the programs, and I believe if you were there last night, the program discussed the, the phasing of how we're going to present this to the students. And it was, in, 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 you know, very, the portion that's going to be showed to the high school kids is different than the program that's going to be showed to the younger kids. Um, it's a, I think it's very well done. Mr. Kelly's going to make sure, along with Mr. McCartney, to, to get that information out onto our website. So. It will be available if you weren't at the meeting last night to be able to view what that looks like and how that program is going to work. Um, Mr. Seltzer and I are going to work together in, in putting a, a, a communication together out to the entire district about safety and security one more time. Um, and, and so I thought it was, it was very well done. Our principals, our building administrators, a lot of those folks stayed last night because it's important to them as well. And I want to recognize the fact that they, you know, it's a long day for our folks. And they were there last night because it's important and they care. Um, so I, I just wanted to make those comments in public regarding the, the security meeting. Scott, if you'd like to add. Yeah, so um, I did get a comment today. I did have a uh, community member call me, uh, not upset, but was trying to understand why it took so long for her to get her child. So, uh, and it was at this middle school. Um, you know, she she was met uh, by security, by campus safety before she could turn in. So those are things that we were working on. You know, that was uh, it was nice to hear. Uh, when she got to come into the middle school, she had to be buzzed in the front door. She then uh, had to stay in the vestibule while her daughter came to her. So she really didn't even get to go into the office. And this was somebody that the, the building knew. Um, and, and so that she she wasn't irritated, but she was just wondering why it took what, what changed. And a lot of our comments were, well, this is what our building was really started to design to do. We're just getting that technology available now to get it done. Uh, so there, there are going to be even more additions to this building as it comes to its completion. Uh, I really want to thank everybody who showed up last night. It was, it was a great turnout for me, uh, and I appreciate all the efforts. And as I said last night, we can't do it alone. We need the parents, we need the kids, we need the community to come together, and that's the only way we can try to prevent anything from happening. Uh, so I'm very appreciative of you coming tonight uh, to voice your concerns, and uh, I'll be glad to meet with you anytime. I know Officer Oslick's glad to meet with anybody, our principals. Uh, so if you want to come in and talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, we'll be glad to talk to you. We'll give you as much information as we can. We can't tell you the entire plan, 
Uh, but we can give you as much information as we have available. But again, I, I, I think this community, I said it last night, this community amazes me. Our students amaze me. I've been in a lot of buildings. I've been in a lot of districts where these kids rally around each other better than anywhere I've ever seen. They support one another better than anywhere I've been. And I really appreciate them, our students. And that's what we keep focused. And I always tell our administrators and our teachers and our custodians and our bus drivers and our aides, everybody, our focus is kids. And we're improving the lives of kids in every aspect of them. And that's what we have to do. And with your help, we'll make sure that we keep that focus and get it done. So thank you again for coming tonight. Thank you for all those who came last night. And then another comment I wanted to make before we close tonight. Uh, the, the reason we asked for this meeting to be in the commons here tonight is we, we want to get the community aware that this space, these buildings, were built not just for students, but for our entire community. We want people to get used to being able to meet in this space, use these spaces as they were designed. So, yes, there is a level of security we have to adhere to, but at, at the same time, we want this this property and in the, in these buildings to be a community space. So, along with that, the board also wanted to be here tonight because this building is getting near completion, and our contractor is going to be going away here shortly. Um, once once the, the, the punch list is done and, and the, the final touches are put on. But we want to take a very thorough walk tonight, walk through this building and, and put our eyes on it to make sure that we, what we paid for is what we got. So the final touches are what everybody sees. So anytime you're in a building, if you see something that doesn't look quite right, let us know. But that's what we're here for tonight. We wanted to put our eyes on this building at least one more time as a board before we say, hey, we think we're close. And we, we can, obviously, we're holding back several million dollars before we make that final payment to these guys to encourage that everything is done according to the way it was designed and built and paid for. So that's the other reason why we're here tonight. Mr. Seltzer has another. And a special thanks to Nutrition Inc. And, uh, you guys can take a few minutes to, to say, you know, they provide the food for tonight. So it's Nutrition Inc. They wanted to sort of present what our kids like. Anybody? Billy Mr. Bank. Bank. I'm well. Hey, good evening, everybody. Billy, it's so nice to see you. Well, oh, thanks, Bill. Good to see you, too. Thank you, Bill. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, um, I think our schools are in a great proximity because if something did happen, people have got time to five minutes away. You can call your hour and tell them, I'm ready to go to the city clock right here on 79. <laughs> You know, I think that we have a lot going for us as far as security. Because we have, we're like every little yeah. police, police department. If something happens, you know, it would be like they would, they would be here in about three minutes. And it just makes you feel so safe. And then with, you know, having officers at each school, you know, it's, it's, it's peace of mind. Plus, you know, someone's here. And they're not going to stand in the floor and watch them for long. I, I know all of them, they would be in here engaged in the first And I, you know, I can't say enough to that. No, could you just uh, tell everybody who you are and where oh, you are? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Bill Bain. I got almost 30 years in this district. I'm in the maintenance department. Um, I'm a plumber and everything. And then 
I had a bus trip, I got a bus, I had uh, CIA. And I, <laughs> that bus was a little bit late coming in, but I don't want to stop. And something that I want, I saw uh, bring to your attention, um, when you're leaving, I'm going to go to Bridgeville down northbound. But I did some contractors today, they put the last beam on the high school learning center. School. And they did it really right. They have an American flag on the last beam. They have a pine tree there that represents no injuries or deaths on this job. And they have a light that everybody, and I know it's going to be spectacular. When I look up and saw the American flag, it makes you cry to be here. And I'm like, you know what? I gotta bring it, I gotta think, there's no podium, so I had to stand up and say, <laughs> so, um, thanks. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Yeah. Hope we get some pictures of that. <laughs> Rita has one. Okay, great. Great. Anyone else? send an inconsistent message out. We want to make sure that our message is uniform to everybody. And quite honestly, with new buildings and old buildings, 
until you really dig down into it, we didn't know what the message was. We, we needed to be trained. Our staff needed to be trained. And, 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 and our officers that are in these buildings have to rethink about what happened. As, as Officer Oslick said last night, every incident they learn from, and they're, 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 they're trying to be better at what they do. So I think as, as going forward and, and taking all the information that we have gathered and, and, and the concerns of the folks, we will put better programs in place to train our staff, to train our kids, and I think you'll see definite improvement in the message. So just bear with us a little longer. God forbid something would happen between now and then, but we are getting there. The kids are getting trained. What, next week's Yeah, next week. Um, and, yeah, and, and March 5th. And our, and our staff is in a much better place than it was three months ago with the Alice training. So I, I think everybody would agree that the message is getting put out there. It's a, going to be a consistent message, and, and we're going to get the kids where, where, we, where we feel comfortable. And again, I said this last night to my wife when I got home. I, I know it's an emotional time, and it's, and it's my children are beyond the school now. My kids are all gone, but they all graduated from Chargers Valley. But I, I got home, and I just feel so bad because I said, we're really in the business of educating children and not policing them. And I, and I don't want them to feel like that's where we're at. I want them to have that growth of mind and spirit when they come into our buildings. You know, I don't, I don't want them to feel that way. We've got to get to a point where we're kind of in that middle zone where they, they don't feel it, but it's there. And it takes time, and it takes money, and it takes effort. So just bear with us. Okay. Anybody else? Huh? All right. We did have an executive session beforehand, and uh, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn. Send the Mr. Kearney first. Second. Mr. Kopeck second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you all for being here.